For the quarter end January 1st, 2022, which for Disney is Q1 fiscal year 2022, per capita spending at Disney's domestic parks was up more than 40% compared to Q1. Park attendees may be grumbling about prices, but shareholders of this blue chip stock certainly don't mind. Disney's stock price rose as much as 7% on Thursday, thanks to better than expected park performance and 11.8 million new Disney Plus subscribers, compared to 7 million expected. Hi, I'm Kate from The Motley Fool, and I spoke with Daniel Fulber about some highlights from Disney's quarter and some of its upcoming attractions, as well as discussed whether Disney's profit-driven tactics have gone too far and risks tarnishing its brand. Yes, we'll just start with with Disney's impressive quarter. It's important to keep in mind that their fiscal year is a little bit different, so they're, they just reported Q1 fiscal year 2022, and that really represents the three-month period from October to December. So for the quarter, they reported 11.8 million added subscribers, and that brings their total to 129.8 million. And if you compare that to Netflix, which has 222 million total subscribers, it's pretty impressive to see um, just two years since Disney Plus started, it already has about 60% as many subscribers as Netflix. And it's also growing faster than Netflix. Netflix only added about 7 million subscribers in its Q4. So Disney is growing faster as you would expect it to just because it's a newer streaming service. But I think that when you when you think about the bull case for Disney and what people have been talking about for a couple years now, the, the thing you'll hear the most is, well, how much is Disney Plus worth compared to Netflix? Because it's something that just didn't exist a couple years ago, and now they have it. And when you look at a company like Netflix, which is about a $200 billion market cap, it used to be a lot more for the recent sell-off. And then you say, well, if Disney Plus is half of that, then you know would it add $100 billion to, to Disney's market cap? So it's just something to think about as Disney Plus grows, how does that factor into its valuation? Another thing I'll say is Disney Plus continues to grow quickly in a very concentrated competitive market. I don't think that they're just competing with Netflix and HBO and Hulu and other streaming services. I mean, they're also competing with other forms of entertainment and attention in general, like YouTube from Google or even video games. They're competing against really all of those different industries. And to see their brand really persevere and continue to grow subscribers, it shows how global it is and, and how strong that core customer following is. And then just turning the page to the parks, I think Disney Plus was a big beat, but the real standout was certainly the parks. Just the fact that they lost money at the end of 2020, and then they reported 95% as high operating income as they did in the pre-pandemic 2019 holiday period. It's just amazing to see that profitability come back. And I think the, the big standout statistic for me, I just, I couldn't believe it, was when they said that the spending per customer, per capita spending at the parks was up 40%, again, in this holiday quarter in 2021 compared to the holiday quarter in 2018, which is their Q1 fiscal year 2019. It's just, I mean, that's inflation resistance right there. If, if you want to see an example of it, if you can have people spend 40% more, I mean, you're going to be able to combat inflation very easily. And it just shows how much pricing power Disney really has. So what, what Disney did well, and it's it, again, it's it's very strategic, is they know that their fiscal year 2020 is kind of a throwaway. They're going to get a lot of forgiveness for that. So what they did is they kind of waited to have a lot of these implementations in terms of Lightning Lane and Genie Plus just at the parks and also upcoming attractions. They waited for fiscal year 2022 to release a lot of that. It's just something important to remember because it's definitely purposeful. So it is going to kind of inflate a lot of their fiscal year 2022 performance. So they have a lot of upcoming rides and we won't get too in the details with the ride specifically, but I think the bigger point is just to, to think about, can Disney justify raising prices? And this argument shows that they can because in a way they are making the experience better for their customers, for the people that go to the park. So because they're, you know, renovating existing rides and then implementing just completely new rides and attractions, it, it does kind of add to the, the thesis of going to Disney World, even if it costs more. Because Disney has raised prices by so much and the demand is still so high, that's a clear indicator that Disney has 
pretty inelastic demand that there's just this huge core group of people that are going to keep showing up really no matter how much they raise prices. Disney is the king of nostalgia and they just they do it in so many different ways. I mean, tangible experiences, real life experiences on the screen and then the merchandise too. So I think that Disney is a company built on storytelling and built built on memories and experiences. And it's not just an amusement park. You know, there really is this theme of, of you go to Disney World and you see the characters that you saw on screen and the merchandise that you, you may have as toys as a kid and whatnot. And you just think about all of the new content that they're creating. It just expands the universes that they already have, like the Boba Fett show, the upcoming Obi-Wan Kenobi show that expands the Star Wars universe and in a way makes it just even more entertaining and, and just even richer over time. The one concern I have is how far will Disney take that and how does that impact its brand? Because there's really two sides to the story. On one hand, you could argue well, they should raise prices even more because that would improve the experience for people. It would shorten lines and it would make Disney more fun. That's one argument. Now, the other argument goes back to Walt Disney himself's vision for the company, which was this magical place where imagination, you know, for adults and things like that, people can keep coming back to and it's accessible and affordable to everyone. That is quickly disappearing. And if it isn't already disappeared, it's, it's getting to the point where maybe you know, middle-class family could go like once every five or 10 years, but even if they go, maybe they're going to wait in lines and it's just not going to be this, this rich experience that it used to be. So the counter argument to Disney raising prices is that Disney world is quickly becoming this kind of upper class place or just breaking the bank of middle-class Americans. And Walt Disney would be turning in his grave if he heard that. So I just think it's important to, to keep that in mind. I mean, Disney's performance is just unbelievable the way the parks have rebounded. I would also add that just from a content creation perspective, I do think that Disney has a big advantage over other content creators like, like Netflix, just because they may not win a lot of Academy Awards for all their films, but they are, they are so profitable. If you look at the box office numbers and what they spend on them, they're just complete cash cows. And then they can release them in the theaters and then have them just funnel right into Disney Plus and build up that content base. So it's a much more organic growth oriented content production model. Whereas Netflix, I mean, the stock has really dropped a lot, probably for this reason that they just keep spending so much money on content. And if you look at Netflix's model, for them to offset inflation, they have to keep raising prices for their service. And it's gotten to the point where will people switch? Will they abandon their subscription? You know, how far can Netflix go? Whereas I think what Disney World and Disney Plus is showing is that Disney could easily raise prices by so much more and it would be completely fine. So I, I think Disney as a business is doing really great. I would just caution investors to watch the brand and you can do that in a lot of different ways. You can go to subreddits, you can go to Disney World and just hear what people are saying, see if they're grumbling a lot or having the time of their lives and just listen and kind of gauge the pulse of the typical Disney customer to see if it's okay and you know they kind of roll their eyes but they'll take it or if Disney's going too far.